Right now, police give us some new information about what led to a lockdown at Middleton High School. We'll hear from a student who was inside as things played out. Also, the race for governor heats up. We'll look at why a primary is possible and how it could hurt one party more than help. And if you feel down about the Packers' early playoff exit, Matt LaFleur feels even worse. We'll hear the message the coach has for his players and for the fans. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Some Middleton High School students tell us they hid under desks and listened to police scanners on their phones this afternoon. And that's helping us understand part of what went on during a lockdown that police just provided a little more information about. Things are safe, but there are plenty of unanswered questions. Our Brad Hamilton is live outside Middleton High School with what we know at this hour. Brad? Susan and Eric, about 25 minutes ago, Middleton police told us this all stemmed from a report that a student was possibly carrying a gun at school today. Apparently, a staff member had reported this to a resource officer, and that's when the school went into lockdown at around 1230. Now, when we arrived around 1 p.m. today, we could see at least five police cars surrounding Middleton High. MPD says it took police about 45 minutes to find the 16-year-old student. They then took him into custody without issue at that point. Around 1 45, the district says the high school was put into a secure status, meaning that classes could resume, but no one could leave. I was pretty scared. I never in a million years thought this would just yeah, happen. Police did not say if the student actually did have a gun or if they had referred any charges against the student. Now, the district initially told us that there would be a press conference, but that has since been canceled. Susan and Eric. All right, Brad Hamilton live in Middleton. Brad, thank you. Chilling temperatures will spread across southern Wisconsin tonight. Many counties are under wind chill advisories. Meteorologist Dana Fulton is out on the weather patio now with the latest. Dana? Our focus early today, of course, on all the snow that we started off the day with, and now transitioning over to a, a very cold spell for the next few days. Here's a live look over Platteville with that fresh blanket of snow overhead. Our sunset just after 5 o'clock for us right now along our western county. Snow accumulations in Platteville close to 3 inches and Madison just shy of 2 inches and in Oregon just over an inch and a quarter. Now again, our focus on these cold temperatures that will be settling in for tonight and sticking with us through the middle of the week. It is 14 currently in Madison. Wind chill closer to the mid single digits. Those wind chills expected to drop for us overnight. So we do have wind chill advisories in effect for tonight and for Tuesday morning. Temperatures to start off the day tomorrow close to 5 below with wind chills in the 10 to 20 below zero range early Tuesday morning starting to get to that a uh, dangerously cold threshold if you're outside for too long but we'll take a closer look at when things might start to improve a little bit in just a few minutes all right Dana thank you stay up to date on the weather with our first warn forecast weather app hourly forecast road conditions and the latest radar you can download it for free in your phone's app store just search WISC weather health leaders say the Omicron surge is loose its grip on northern uh, northeastern states, but it has yet to peak in other parts of the country. Well, this comes as school districts in Virginia take legal action against their governor for an executive order allowing parents to opt out of mask mandates. Skylar Henry has the details. The Omicron variant is retreating in some parts of the U.S., but remains relentless in other areas, especially where vaccination rates are still lagging. We're never really going to get to herd immunity as long as only two-thirds of the country is vaccinated. We really need to get to 85, 90 percent. Right. The surge forced nearly 4,500 schools to cancel in-person learning for at least one day last week. Some districts, like this one in Patterson, New Jersey, are running a rigorous testing program to stay open. For us, being vaccinated, being boosted, uh, and having a test is the answer. Seven Virginia school divisions, including the district right here in Fairfax County, filed a lawsuit on Monday challenging the Republican governor's executive order, allowing parents to opt out of mask mandates for their children. We don't find ourselves uh, here out of um, <laughs> desire. Fairfax County School Board Chair Stella Pekarski says masks have helped keep transmission low and schools open. 
this is a clear clash of, um, you know, what is the constitutional authority of local school boards to make policies for their for their school systems. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin's spokesperson said they are committed to aggressively defending parents' fundamental right to make decisions with regard to their child's upbringing, education, and care as the legal process plays out. Meanwhile, the first of the federal government's free N95 masks began arriving at some U.S. pharmacies Monday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Fairfax County, Virginia. And about 100 teachers in Richmond, Virginia, called in sick today to protest the governor's executive order. The COVID-19 vaccine could eventually become a yearly shot. Pfizer's CEO says the company is working on a yearly dose like your flu shot. Instead of having people get a booster every few months, the company is also working on a vaccine that protects against Omicron and some of the other variants. Meanwhile, the restaurant industry continues to feel the impact of the pandemic. The National Restaurant Association says 88% of restaurants experienced a decline in demand in recent weeks due to the Omicron variant. A new survey found 76% of restaurant operators are seeing a decline in business. Today, the National Restaurant Association sent a letter to Congress asking lawmakers to replenish the nearly $29 billion restaurant revitalization fund in the coming legislation package. The fund ran out of money last year, awarding grants to just a third of those restaurant operators who applied. Athletes from around the world have started arriving in Beijing for the 2022 Winter Olympics. China has a zero tolerance policy for COVID, which means athletes will be living in a tightly controlled bubble. Teams must be fully vaccinated or prepared to face 21 days in quarantine. It's best to stay safe and, and healthy, and I'm honored that we're still able to compete and um, participate in the Winter Olympic Games. Like last summer, fans will be banned from events. Chinese officials continue to mass test millions leading up to the opening ceremony on February 4th. January isn't over yet, but the governor's race for November already is heating up after a very public tiff between likely gubernatorial candidate Kevin Nicholson and top Wisconsin Assembly Republican Robin Voss. The top Republican donor in the state is now asking Nicholson to run. Our Naomi Coles joins us to explain. Naomi? Yeah, ha having an expensive primary would not actually be very good news for Republicans. In fact, that's kind of what happened back in 2018 when Kevin Nicholson ran for Senate the first time. He lost to Leah Vukmir in a very expensive primary. She went on to lose the general election to Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. Now, of course, this is not an apples to apples comparison. It's a gubernatorial race where Republicans have a major advantage since midterm elections often go against the party in the White House. And in some senses, everyone wanting a piece of the action is a sign of how strong Republicans think they'll be in November. But people look at this race, they look at the political climate and they think, hey, this is my chance. Eyes are going to be on Wisconsin um, from all over the country and we're going to see uh, we're going to see money pouring into this state uh, from both sides. Now, some context about the U-Lines. They live in a Chicago suburb. They own U-Line supplies in Pleasant Prairie, and they donate tens of millions every major election cycle. Now, Dick U-Line was, in fact, the fifth largest donor in the entire country during the 2020 election cycle. Now, even while he is asking Kevin Nicholson to run for governor, his wife, Liz, has already donated $220,000 to the uh, campaign of Rebecca Clayfish. More on the state of all this tonight at 6 o'clock. We will see you at 6. Naomi, thank you. Vice President Kamala Harris made a stop in Wisconsin this afternoon, highlighting administration efforts to upgrade aging infrastructure across the country. In Milwaukee, she was accompanied by Envir the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Michael Regan, where they discussed the president's plan to replace all lead pipes over the next decade. During one stop, she heard the story of a mother whose son is still overcoming development challenges years after being exposed to lead. She showed the vice president a picture of her son and gave Harris a picture book that her son made explaining his experience with what he calls the lead monster. These investments will create good union jobs. These investments will address the needs of our children. These investments will result in improved public health the creation of more jobs, the infusion of support for important apprenticeship programs, and it's just simply the right thing to do. 
Yes. Harris also met with union workers who have the duty of removing and replacing lead pipe. They showed the vice president the equipment they use and the challenges of working with lead pipes. Scott's Democratic lawmakers have come up with a package of bills they say will help local governments fight crime. They say Republicans have reduced shared revenue payments to local governments, and that has affected police and fire departments, as well as libraries, parks, and health departments. The Democrats said over the last decade, shared revenue payments have decreased 9%, while spending on public safety has increased by almost 17%. And election season almost here again. State officials are reminding people they can get a free voter ID from the DMV. The DMV urging people to start the application process right now if they don't have one already. More information can be found at our website, channel3000.com. The next election will be the Wisconsin Spring Primary. That is Tuesday, February 15th. Saturday night will sting for quite a while. That goes for both the team and fans of the Packers. After losing to the 49ers in the divisional round, it's still hard for Matt LaFleur to talk about this loss. Sports anchor Jordan Reed joins us now with more on what he had to say during his year-ending press conference. Jordan? Yeah, no doubt this loss is going to stick with the team for a very long time, especially since it's the second year in a row that they've lost a playoff game at home. Now, following Saturday night's game, players and Matt LaFleur couldn't find the words to express how much this hurts because they did not expect the season to end this soon or in this manner. And even today, when Matt LaFleur talked, he still couldn't fully process what actually happened. I don't think anybody thought that we'd be in this situation, quite honestly. I told our team today, you know, how much I love them and respect what they do on a daily basis. I'm disappointed for our players, just everything they put into this. I'm disappointed for our fans who, who absolutely showed out for us. Obviously disappointed in myself that uh, I, I couldn't do more to, to get our guys, um, you know, over the hump because this, this one's tough. Well, now the Packers enter the offseason where there's going to be a lot of decisions being made, namely on Aaron Rodgers and whether he's going to stay or go next season. He has expressed he has a lot to think about, but he'll figure it out before free agency begins. Now LaFleur adding this afternoon that everyone is on the same page and they want him back next year. All right, Jordan, thank you. Up next at 5, tensions continue to rise in Europe. Now Asia as Russia and China threaten to invade neighboring countries. Coming up, what the White House is considering to ease conflicts. And later, why traffic on Highway 151 was halted earlier today. We'll have details coming up at 6. An intraday reversal for the ages on Wall Street. The Dow erased an 1,100-point plunge to add 99. NASDAQ was down 5% before finishing up 86. And the S&P gains a dozen. We'll be right back. Save big money on new flooring. Menards. Marquee Industries Carpet has an ultra soft touch and feel. Their stylish and luxurious designs make it ideal for living rooms and bedrooms. IVC's sheet vinyl flooring is a great way to enhance the beauty of your home. It's durable, waterproof, and easy to install. Save big money on new carpet and sheet vinyl flooring. During Menards, more bang for your buck sale. Save big money at Menards. Ivon Express is the only place where you can count on same-day service. Thanks to our local labs, shop our huge selection and get quality glasses at a price you'll love. And see better today. Right glasses, right price, right now. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own. Many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. 
Washington Swamp. Ron Johnson's up to his neck in it. It's no surprise Johnson broke his promise to only serve two Senate terms as his net worth doubled in office. Johnson pushed for a new tax loophole for the wealthiest Americans, personally benefited from the tax break, and two of his biggest donors pocketed millions. Ron Johnson's deep in the swamp, out for himself, not us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Josh Ryder is tempting your taste buds with Tex-Mex in his next Restaurant Week profile. Then answer our question of the day, and you could win these restaurant vouchers. And wind chills tomorrow morning could be a little dangerous as you head out the door. We'll have the latest tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. Be prepared for winter weather. Trust the First One Weather Team to give you clear, timely, and accurate info, keeping you safe and ahead of the storms. Your certified most accurate team. First One Weather, only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Right now, conflicts are rising in Europe and Asia as both Russia and China are making aggressive moves against neighboring countries. Could U.S. troops be deployed to ease those tensions? Chris Wynn has the details. Amid mounting fears of a Russian incursion into Ukraine. Even as we continue to prioritize diplomacy and dialogue, we must also increase readiness. The Biden administration is considering deploying several thousand U.S. troops to Eastern Europe and the Baltics. The potential move meant to deter Russia from invading Ukraine. The United States has taken steps to heighten the readiness of its forces at home and abroad so that they are prepared to respond to a range of contingencies, including support to the NATO response force if... It is activated. With Russia amassing troops along the Ukrainian border and British intelligence services reporting the Kremlin's possible intentions to install a pro-Russian leader in Kiev, U.S. and NATO allies are taking a firmer stance. The Kremlin called those reports hysteria. The United States will act firmly in defense of its national interests in response to actions by Russia that harm us, our allies, our partners. Russia sees NATO's growing support for Ukraine as a threat to its own security. There are certain basic principles uh, that we're not, uh, in, by one iota, going to compromise on, including, for example, uh, NATO's open door, uh, the right of countries to uh, choose with whom they'll associate. The U.S. military also reacting to another incident overseas after dozens of Chinese warplanes crossed into Taiwan's air defense identification zone Sunday and Monday. China's aggression following a U.S.-Japan show of naval force in the Philippine Sea. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn. Right now, fire crews are battling wildfire out in Northern California. That fire broke out Friday in Colorado and has burned 700 acres already. About 500 people have been evacuated. And while the cause is still unknown, wind gusts of up to 50 miles per hour and dead vegetation are feeding the flames. California leaders say they will be using some of the $600 million in aid from the White House to help reduce wildfire risk. You heard about the loss of 7 million acres just in the last two years in the state of California. But it's the fear of loss that's beyond just those acres. It's the fear of losing traditions, lifestyles, people. Crews say only about 35% of it's contained. Meanwhile, officials are urging residents to boil their tap water because the fire may have damaged the water system. Well, several counties in our viewing area will be under wind chill advisories tonight. Meteorologist Dana Fulton has the forecast. Dana? Really, anywhere west of Dane County, expecting our wind chills to drop to those dangerous levels overnight. So wind chill advisories in effect west of Dane County for tonight and for Tuesday morning. Likely going to see them again for Tuesday night into Wednesday. Wednesday morning. This bitter cold trend really anchoring in for the next few days as we will have a crystal clear sky throughout the day on Tuesday and Tuesday night. So plan on our wind chills for Wednesday morning to fall even lower. Tonight we're looking at more of the 10 to 20 degree below zero range for Wednesday morning. We could be as low as 20 to 30 degrees below zero for our wind chills. So again, when we start to reach that threshold, just 10 to 15 minutes outside with exposed skin can be quite dangerous. Any long term exposure, again, approaching that 
that dangerous threshold. Light snow possible for Thursday, but otherwise the focus right now uh, certainly on our, our cold spell anchoring and Doppler track clearing out after our snowy start to the day. Southern Wisconsin really adding on to our snowpack. Now seeing much of Southern Wisconsin in the six to nine inch range for our, our snowpack on the ground, our snow depth on the ground right now. Areas well to the north towards Rhinelander. That's where um, we still have significant snow on the ground in the northern portion of the state. Now overnight, our skies still holding on just a few clouds through the evening. Temperatures expected to drop down to the single digits below zero to start off the day on Tuesday. Again, wind chills colder than that. Afternoon high temperatures will be in the mid single digits for Tuesday with wind chills staying below zero through the afternoon and evening. Because we have that clear sky throughout the evening and overnight on Tuesday, temperatures will fall even lower for us for Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, check out these overnight lows. Again, that's not our wind chills. That's where our actual temperatures will be in the mid to upper teens below zero with wind chills even colder than that. By Wednesday afternoon, high temperatures climbing up just a bit more into the single digits. Our breeze then coming from the south, so it won't be quite as cold as we look ahead to the back half of the work week. As far as those wind chills throughout the day tomorrow, again, expected to stay below zero even as we get into the early afternoon and the mid afternoon. At that level, we're just 15 minutes to 20 minutes outside with any sort of exposed skin could lead to uh, some very dangerous consequences. So alert days in the forecast for Tuesday and for Wednesday due to those dangerous wind chills early in the day and wind chills staying below zero through the afternoon despite temperatures climbing above zero. Five, the high for tomorrow, mostly sunny sky, bitterly cold out wind speeds and the 5 to 10 mile per hour range for us for our Tuesday and for Tuesday night into Wednesday. Wednesday we'll have plenty of sunshine. Doesn't help us warm up too much though. We stay in the single digits for afternoon highs. We finally start to get closer to average on Thursday. This time of year we should be in the upper 20s. That's where we'll land for Thursday afternoon with the possibility for some light snow to develop later on in the day. Not seeing much accumulation with that chance though for Thursday. Friday we're in the teens. Saturday and Sunday high temperatures in the low 20s. Looking ahead quickly to next week. We'll start off the week in the mid 20s with some light snow chances expected to develop for the start of February could see a few rounds of snow building in for the middle of next week again transitioning into uh, February at that point as far as traffic conditions look right now I didn't have any accidents popping up on my system but of course some roads still taking a little bit of time to get things cleaned up after the snow coming through this morning so keep that in mind as you're heading out the door to, to head home this evening could still be a little slick a little sloshy in spots along the Beltline does look like the eastbound side reduced uh, quite a bit few slow and go spots for 39 and 90 north and southbound. No delays for us this evening from the Beltline to Janesville. 24 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Middleton to Sauk City and downtown Sun Prairie. About a 20 minute drive for us right now. That's a quick look at traffic. All right. Thank you, Dana. Coming up, two young sisters in Minnesota participated in their first ever dog sled race. We'll share their story after the break. Now, first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. At the Burrish Group at UBS, we believe in empowering women to take control of their financial security. With a team of female advisors who understand the needs and goals of women. We believe you can achieve anything you put your mind to and can help you stay ahead of life's expected and unexpected events. Give our team a call today to start the conversation. Got my hair. Silver. Number one for diabetic dry skin. Number one for psoriasis symptom relief. And number one for eczema symptom relief. Gold Bond. Champion your skin. You don't know how much pressure you put on your septic system, but Ridex does. In a 21-month study, scientists proved that Ridex reduces up to 20% of waste buildup every month. Take the pressure off with Ridex. <laughs> Reynolds Wrap makes this whole cooking and cleanup thing so easy. Speeds up this so I can get to them. Easy prep, cook and clean with Reynolds Wrap. 
Welcome to the lifestyles of the smart and savvy. Today, the Coopers are a cost-conscious couple. But back in the day, not so much. Now, saving is more their style, which is why they chose Consumer Cellular. They get the same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Imagine talk, text and data starting at $20 a month and award-winning customer service. Switch to Consumer Cellular today and start saving. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, that moment when we see a patient smile is everything to us. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we're here to help you. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. with Wisconsin Lottery Scratch Games. It's Candy Blast, the sweet new $3 game that's chock full of fun. Use your symbols to match and reveal an entire game. Win up to $30,000. Instant Scratch Games from the Wisconsin Lottery. Odds are you'll like them. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. A rare sight in Madison over the weekend, a snowy owl was spotted in the area. Snowy owls are Arctic birds that typically live in northern Canada most of the year, but in the winter, some move south to the northern U.S. The DNR says as some winters bring more snow to Wisconsin, the birds are prompted to fly further south to our area. The DNR also says if you spot a snowy owl, don't get too close. If there's too many bird watchers or casual onlookers um, who maybe are too close to the owl or flush it repeatedly, um, that can cause uh, negative consequences for the owl either directly, uh, maybe it flushes and gets hit by a car or something like that, um, or indirectly where it's just utilized you know, energy um, flying from people uh, and not hunting um, and finding that next prey source or something like that. The DNR also says snowy owls typically look for an open habitat that resembles a tundra. That includes airports, grasslands, and wetlands in the area. Kids in Minnesota with dreams of dog sled racing got the chance to prove themselves over the weekend. Rob Cole spoke with two young sisters who are new to the sport but say they love every minute. In dog sledding, there may be one human on the trail, but the race is a team effort. For nine-year-old Lucy Raymaker, her dogs serve different purposes. Norma is nice and sweet, and um, Marshall is a hard worker. Lucy participated in her first Bear Grease competition Saturday in Two Harbors, the annual Cub Run. To enter, mushers must be under the age of 14, and the qualities they look for in their dogs may be different than the adults competing in next week's marathon. Norma gives the best kisses. The Raymaker family has two competitors this year. Lucy's older sister also raced in the Cub for the first time. When I get on the runners and ride by myself, I feel free. Freedom she's experiencing with her canine teammates. It's just really fun having just me and the dogs. The Raymakers are second generation mushers. We started running dogs kind of more on a recreational level quite a few years ago and then, I don't know, probably five years ago we started of doing more competitive racing stuff. For organizers, passing a love of dog sledding on to the next generation is what the Cub Run is all about. When this idea about the Cub Run and education came through, I, I fell in love with it. For Keyport, dog sledding has been in his family for many generations. I'm the great grandson of, of John Bear Grease himself. Mushers and dogs can either race a two mile course or opt for an even shorter quarter mile race. The Cub Run has a staggered start with racers leaving every two minutes. And though the course may be shorter than most Bear Grease races, for parents watching, the finish line is just as exciting. Oh, a lot of pride. For these young mushers, the race is over, but the journey may have just begun. Lucy and Ruby finished the 2.2 mile race in eighth and ninth place out of 15 yesterday. A final check on your first worn forecast when we return.
update your home with help from Menards. Choose from our in-stock Mastercraft doors or design your door your way with our door designer. Mastercraft has the fastest delivery, so you get your door in approximately seven days. Keep your home comfortable with Knopf fiberglass insulation. It offers year-round comfort, saves energy, and reduces sound transmission. Rolls of craft-faced or unfaced R11 insulation are $9.99 each after rebate during Menards More Bang for Your Buck sale. Save big money at Menards. Is price inflation costing you way more now for food, shelter, and basic expenses? Is paying credit cards and high debt now getting harder? I'm attorney Peter Francis Geraci. Call Geraci Law to see about Chapter 7 or 13 to eliminate or consolidate as low as $275 a month. On your phone, from your home, or old school in person. Zero down to start. Hit the debt free button. Click or call now. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. Dinosaur Adventure roars into Madison. One weekend only. Alliant Energy Center. With life-size dinosaurs and massive family fun. Experience the thrill of the prehistoric age. Featuring the ferocious T-Rex, Triceratops, Velociraptor, and more. Go on a realistic fossil dig. Take a ride on your favorite dinosaur. Bounce around in the prehistoric playground. And a baby dinosaur meet and greet. Take an amazing dinosaur adventure. February 5th and 6th. Alliant Energy Center. Tickets at DinosaurAdventure.com. I'm Rebecca, and you might know me from reality TV. And this was my stubborn body fat that I just couldn't get rid of. But then I went to Sonobello, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. It is so intensely gratifying for one visit to make this big of a change. It's amazing. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, and so much more. It feels incredible to look down and it's flat. Thank you again, Sonobello. I'm so happy. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-800-595-1532 or go to sonobello.com. Alert days in the forecast were Tuesday and Wednesday. Overnight temperatures will fall below zero for Tuesday morning with wind chills in the 10 to 20 below range. Wednesday morning will be close to 14 degrees below zero for overnight lows with wind chills expected to be even colder. All right, Dana, thank you. We're back in 30 minutes for News Street Now at 6. Stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News.